In this video, we're going to define linear dependency and independency of a set of functions. And these two concepts are basic to study of linear differential equations. So we're going to start with definition of linear dependency. So it says here that a set of functions, in other words, collection of functions, um, we have denoted them here as f1 of x, f2 of x, and so on and so forth, a finite collection or finite set. So that set is said to be linearly dependent on some interval i. If there exist constants, c1, c2, up to cn, not all zeros, that's important, such that if you multiply each function by the corresponding constant and you add them together, that's going to be equal zero. And another important note, for every x in the interval, for, for every x value in that interval i. Another way to define what we just described is to say that a set of functions is linearly dependent if at least one function can be expressed as a linear combination of the remaining functions. So it means that I can pick any function here and isolate it. So in other words, um, I can get function f2 of x by itself by subtracting all terms and dividing each term by c2. This way, um, I can say that function f2 of x is being expressed as the linear combination of the remaining functions, right? They will be all on the other side. So that's what linear dependence is. Now, what is linear independence? Well, we say that set of functions is called uh, or is said to be linearly independent if it's not linearly dependent, right? So set of functions can be either linearly dependent or independent. Or we can define linear independence this way. We can say that a set, of, a set of functions linearly independent only if this equation, this equality, um, so in other words, left-hand side equals zero, only in, in the case when c1, c2, c3, and up to cn, um, those constants are zeros. If that's the only way to make this equation true and we cannot find any other C values that are non-zero, um, then we will be looking at the set of functions that's linearly independent. Now, to illustrate this, let's try the following example. So in this example, we have a set of four functions. Here they are. And we want to show or to verify that the set is linearly dependent. It means that there are certain values of constants c1, c2, c3, and c4, such that when we multiply each function by the corresponding constant and add that all together, we obtain zero. Well, constants are given to, um, to us, so we're going to be verifying that using the following constants. So um, I'll say show that c1 times f of 1x plus c2 times f of 2x plus c3 times f of 3 uh, f3 of x plus c4 times f4 of x that equals 0 let's show that okay well c1 is 1 1 times f1 it's square root of x plus 5 plus c2 plus c2, c2 um, is negative 1, and then times f2, that's square root of x plus 5x, plus c3 times f3, c3 is 5, and f3 is x minus 1, and then finally c4 is 0, and then times f4 is x squared. So the question uh, is that 0? Um, notice that, once again, some constants can be zero, but um, we said it's going to be linearly dependent if we can show this equality with constants that are not all zeros. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this, so it's square root of x plus 5. I will be distributing all the constants here, minus square root of x minus 5x, right, plus 5x minus 5 plus zero. Is that zero? Let's see, I think we can cancel. 
quite a few things, right? Square root of x, negative square root of x, 5 and negative 5, negative 5x, five and positive 5x. Yes, yeah, so everything got cancelled and we end up with 0, big one, 0. So yeah, um, we showed that that's true, that with those four constants, we can set up the following equation, and this equation holds. So that means that the set of functions is linearly dependent. The set of functions is linearly dependent. Now, the good question to ask is the following. So in this example, it was pretty easy, right? We were given set of functions and we were given fun uh, constants to try. So that was easy. But what if I don't have constants? What if I'm just looking at the set of functions? How do I know if it's nearly dependent or independent? Well, I cannot try all possible C values, right? How do I know that non-zero values of those constants exist so that this equation holds? Well, the good news is that we won't have to look for those constants. There is much better and quicker way to determining linear dependency or independency of a set of functions. And the process is described here. We're going to use what's called the round scan of the functions. So the round scan is the determinant for specific determinant of the specific matrix. What is that matrix? Well, that matri matrix is formed by the set of functions and their derivatives. So here's an example. So here we're looking at the raw scan of the set of two functions and down below we have raw scan for the set of three functions. Now, if we have two functions, what is the matrix? Um, in the first row of that matrix, we have functions listed, and in the second row, we have their first derivatives. So when we have a set of two functions, we end up with two by two matrix, and once we find its determinant, well, that's going to be the run, uh, run scan. If we have a set of three functions, then similar idea, the first row are just the functions themselves, second row will be their first derivatives, and the third row will be the third, uh, their second derivatives. And then determinant of that matrix is the Ruskin of the set of functions. So it's three by three matrix. Now we can continue with this idea. So if we have set of four functions, it's going to be four by four matrix and so on and so forth. But how do we use this value, the determinant of the Ruskin? This is how we use it to determine dependency or independency. So if the determinant, well, I should say if the Ruskin of the functions is zero, then the functions are linearly dependent. I have an extra word here. It shouldn't be there. Okay, so one more time. If the Raskin is zero, then functions are linearly dependent. And then the then if the Raskin is not zero value, then the functions are linearly dependent. Well, let's try it. Um, the best way to understand this is by trying an example, right? So I'm gonna, we're going to use the Raskin to determine of the given functions. We have a set of two functions are linearly dependent or independent. Let's set up that matrix and find its determinant. So the Raskin will be determinant of the following matrix. In the first row, I will have my functions listed. So 1 plus x and the next column is x cubed. And now in the second row, I will have their derivatives. I don't have to do any scratch work here. I can just right away figure out the derivatives, right? Um, derivative of 1 plus x is just 1, and derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So let's find the determinant of this matrix. Let me remind, let me remind you how we do it. Um, to find the determinant of 2 by 2 matrix, we're going to multiply entries 1, 1, and 2, 2. It's like first column, first, first row, second column, second row, right? So in other words, diagonally. So that's 1 plus x times 3x squared. And then we subtract 
the product of the entries 1, 2, and 2, 1. So I'm going this way, another diagonal. So it's 1 times x cubed. Okay, so let's simplify this. I'm distributing 3x squared, so it's 3x squared plus 3x cubed minus x cubed. And that is 3x squared plus 2x cubed. So this is the wrong scan. And now we have to analyze it and see if it equals 0 or if it's not 0. Well, since we end up with this function here, it may be equal 0, right, in some cases. Let's see where it's going to be equal 0. So to find that, I'm going to force that to be equal 0. So I'm going to set the expression 3x squared plus 2x cubed equals 0. And I will solve this polynomial equation. I'm going to use factoring to solve it. I will factor out x squared, so then it's 3 plus 2x equals 0. Then I'm going to set each factor equals 0. x squared equals 0. From here I can see that x is 0. And then 3 plus 2x equals 0. And then from here x equals negative 3 over 2. So these are the values for which this expression 3x squared plus 2x cubed equals 0, right? So that means that at those values the functions are linearly dependent. But if I want to say where these two functions are linearly independent, then I have to say that they're linearly independent everywhere except those two values. And I can describe that using interval notation. I can say that the functions are linearly independent on the following intervals. So I'm going to describe intervals that exclude 0 and negative 3 halves. So it's from negative infinity to negative 3 halves, from negative 3 halves to 0, and then from 0 to positive infinity. So as you can see, those three intervals describe all possible values, all real values, except negative 3 halves and then 0. So that's where these two functions are linearly independent because the round scan is non-zero at all those values.